Hi there, my name is Nils with learn to diy and today I'll be showing you how to build a riser with built-in power so that you can add stadium seating to your home theater. Now this project involves three main steps. First, after getting your measurements, you're going to build a box using some pretty basic construction techniques, and in that box you're going to do a little bit of basic wiring in order to get things ready for an outlet. Second, we'll carpet the outside of the box, and then we'll insulate the inside of the box, and then we'll finish everything off with the third step, which is to wire it up for the outlet and then for a plug as an extension. Now for the first step, we need to start with some measurements. So in our case here, as you can see, we've got two rows of three, so I needed to measure exactly what the width and the depth of this would be, and that's pretty straightforward, but the trickier part is finding out how high you need your riser to be. What we want to avoid is making the riser too low so that when you're sitting in this back row, it cuts off the bottom of the screen. What I found was easiest was to set up the scenario as realistically as possible. If you can have some family members or friends help out by sitting in the front, then they can put the seats up or down so you can see kind of a more realistic situation. And then take some books, sit on those books in the back row, whether you're reclined or sitting up, and see what you can see. You'll then want to get the measurements of how high those books needed to be in order for you to always be able to see over the front row. We'll keep the construction of this one pretty simple. As far as the lumber, you're going to need some 2x8, 2x10, or whatever the dimension is that matches the height that you want this to be. Now be sure to bear in mind that lumber dimensions are usually about a half inch shorter than what they're named. So a 2x8 is actually 1.5 by 7.5. So you'll need to take that into consideration for any math for adding up your sides and your ends. After cutting my 2x10s to length for the front and the back, I made sure to cut the sides minus the 3 inches that the front and the back would take up. After cutting my two sides, I had just enough left over to serve as a brace for the middle of the box. I chose just to use some 3 inch decking screws just because I had some extras lying around and didn't want to have to go buy anything new, and those worked out just fine. I drove four of those into each of the ends of the sides as well as the middle brace. I highly recommend that you put braces at least every couple of feet, if not more. So I did take some 2x4s that I had lying around and cut those to length, and then I used those as braces in between that middle brace and the sides. This just adds a lot of stability to the flooring that we're going to put on top. Now because I had several sheets of OSB lying around like you see here, I thought I would build as much of this as I could with the stuff that I already had on hand and just use up those scraps. If you're buying some 4x8 sheets of OSB, that'll make the job a little bit easier and you know that most of your cuts will likely be pretty straight from the manufacturer. Because my scraps were not cut at 90 degrees most of the time, I decided to just let those overhang a little bit and then I trimmed those up afterward. So I kind of just puzzle pieced this together as best I could. I also made sure to fasten this down with multiple screws to get this thing as sturdy and rock solid as possible. I set my circular saw to its max depth cut and then I just rode that blade along the outside to get a nice flush cut of those OSB pieces right along the edges of my box. After finishing off the first layer, I went back and did a second layer, making sure that I did not put any of the joints in the same location. If you're going to have to end a piece in the middle somewhere, make sure to end it over a stud. In my case, what I did here was mark the center of the stud, I set my circular saw blade to one half inch depth, and then I rode along and just cut that off right in the middle, and that way I could butt my new piece right up on that stud as well. This ensures that all of the edging of your flooring is supported by 2x material on all sides, and then you can use screws to fasten that in. With the box built, the next step is to get ready for some electrical. In my case, I just wanted one outlet. Be sure to pay special attention to where you place the outlet. I made the mistake of putting mine a couple of inches too far forward. If I had put it any further forward, then the framing of my chairs would have covered it up completely. So it's a good idea to make sure to see exactly where that needs to go before you start cutting your hole. Now I chose to use an oscillating multi-tool to make plunge cuts right through once I knew where that box needed to be, but you can also just use a drill and drill a hole and then cut it out with a jigsaw or even use a circular saw to do this job. Just so you're aware, there are a couple of types of electrical boxes that you can choose from. You can go with an existing work box, which is what I'm using here, and this gives me the option to have these little wings or flaps that pull out and those just pull tight against the flooring material in this case. With my electrical box in place, I was able to take about 10 feet of some 14-2 Romex cable and run one end of it into the electrical box and then drill a hole in the side of the riser and run the rest out that way. With the box built and the electrical started, we're ready for step two, which is carpet. We're now ready to go ahead and put carpet on the riser. It's up to you if you wanna put padding. I've decided not to put padding on this, we will put insulation inside of it to make sure there's no acoustic reverberation happening inside there. 
But for now, we're ready to go ahead and put the carpet on. To fasten this on, I've got a stapler here, and this is just a cheapo Harbor Freight stapler running off of a really tiny hot dog compressor. And I'm running this at about 80 PSI, and I'm running quarter inch wide staples that are three quarters of an inch deep. And that should be sufficient to hold this on, especially where we're gonna be putting several staples on here to hold it. Now with our remnant cut to size, we're ready to start fastening this thing on. And unfortunately, I don't have a, a carpet kick or a knee kick. And so I'm gonna have to do my best to try to pull this as taut as I can all the way through, making sure I don't leave any waves or bubbles or spaces in this. The first thing I'm gonna do down here is mark where my outlet is. And I'm gonna cut into this. So I'm just cutting that much out, just a little bit here. And I'm gonna pull this corner as tight as I can and do the same thing. All right, same thing in the middles. Now for the corners here, I wanna pull these down as tight as I can and then staple them as low to the ground, as low to that base as I can, making sure that they're nice and tight. Since I don't have tack strips, this is kind of my next best thing. So with my first side done, I can now focus on my first corner, which is right under here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a 45 degree roughly from the actual corner up here, inside here, right down like this, and then straighten it out down towards the bottom of the platform. And once I have this line cut here, I'm gonna take the side and wrap it up and over and fit in that 45 in that line and butt them up against each other and try to get a nice tight fit so that you can't see the seam at all. Okay, there we go. Now our goal is to match that piece we just cut. And then I can cut this piece off. We're gonna see if we tuck how that looks. And you end up with a pretty nice seam and your corner is nice and tight and there's nothing in the way there, which is awesome. From here, we're just gonna wrap around and do the whole thing on the rest of it. And then we'll do the electrical for the outlet as soon as we're done. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and insulate the inside of this box. And I've got some extra R19 insulation here that I had from when I finished the basement, so I'm just gonna use that. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to prevent a bunch of sound from rattling around inside here. Okay, pretty easy stuff. That just took me about three minutes to do, so this is good to go. Now I'm gonna do my wiring and we'll be all set. Now, if you enjoy this type of content and find it helpful and want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking on the Patreon link in the description below, or you can join and become a member of this channel. And whether you choose to donate or not, we're glad you're here, so thanks for watching. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and wire up our outlet into the riser. The first thing we're gonna need to do is strip off the sheathing here, and then I'm gonna strip our neutral and our line. Okay, so I've got all three exposed. Black goes to brass. So I like to take some needle nose pliers and make a little hook. And ideally you wanna have that hook going in the same direction that you twist. So having it go around clockwise. And that way when you tighten this up, it just tightens itself on there. Doesn't matter which screw you put it on, they're both connected and then white to silver, and then lastly, our ground. So that's all wired up, that's all there is to it. Okay, that's plenty. Got myself an unbreakable nylon plate here. Okay, there we go. Next on the other end, 
We're going to do almost the same thing, except for I've purchased a simple little plug here. So inside we've got a brass screw, a silver screw, and a ground screw, just like on the outlet itself. We're going to really do the exact same thing that we just did. This time we're going to peel off very little because if you look at it, we actually don't need a whole lot more than what's peeled off now. And again, we'll make some hooks on all three. The last thing to worry about here is the screw that closes this is right here where the wire would go. So you can either go around it like this, or you can open these up a little bit more and uh, thread those around. Look at that. Okay, nice and tight. And now we've got a good plug end with a ground and our three prong is ready to go. So, all right, so I've gone ahead and plugged this in on the other end here and I've got an outlet tester here. We'll just make sure everything looks good. There we go. So when these two lights are lit up and this one is not, that means we have full connectivity and everything's looking good. Now, because you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you're into home theaters. So I've got a whole playlist that you can check out right here where you can learn all about how I built this home theater from scratch, some of the components that we use in here, how I built the screen and lots of other videos. So feel free to check that out. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.